In our next unit, we want to talk about premise two of the moral argument. We said premise one says, if God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Premise two says, objective moral values and duties exist. Regarding premise two, the argument that atheists raise to counter that premise is uh, referred to as moral relativism. It says that morals exist, but they're entirely subjective. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that they can vary by individual. So I can think one thing is right, and you can think that another thing is right, and we're both allowed to be just as relevant and just as uh, moral in uh, people's minds uh, as each other. Or a culture can think one thing is right, and another culture can have another view on that same issue, but both are just as relevant. No one's morality is any better than another's. Uh, and so that's a view held by many college students, according to surveys. College students are probably not the best uh, compared to philosophy professors and scientists uh, at figuring that out logically. Um, my response to that is to just ask a question. Are moral values really just personal preferences? Is that all they are? Are they just social conventions like using a fork to eat your food or not wearing white socks with a suit? Uh, is there a morality cafeteria where I can go to select the morals I want and I just pick out the ones that please me. And so it's simply a matter of personal preference. You know, there's the, the old joke that says, uh, if, if, it's, if morality really is uh, a matter of personal preference, uh, uh, they say in some cultures they eat their neighbors, in other cultures they love their neighbors. Which would you prefer? And that kind of puts it starkly uh, and draws the difference out for people to see. Well, the first argument against moral relativism uh, uh, is, is, is the fact that philosophy professors agree with Christians that moral values do exist that are objective. Um, they, they believe they do exist. And, and they tend to be of the three different views, probably the deepest thinkers in terms of logic. And so that is one argument. Um, secondly, uh, most of us trust our senses to, to discern the physical world around us. And in the same sense, we should trust our moral sense uh, to discern that there is a right and wrong. In Hindu culture, it used to be the case that they practiced something called sati. And the widow of uh, the deceased husband would throw herself on the bonfire the pyre, funeral pyre of her uh, deceased husband uh, in order not to be a burden to others. Now, this was declared to be illegal in India, for example, but it's a practice that did exist for centuries in the Hindu culture. Are we really saying that something like that has just as much uh, relevance as the morality of some other culture. But that's just as good as anything 
any other solution to uh, a problem. In China, there are certain cultures that would bind the little, the toes of little girls in order to create lotus blossoms that are gnarled and, and bent. And it's supposed to be a beautiful thing. But is that just as good a thing? Because many of these girls would end up crippled. Is that something that's just as good as any other culture's morality? Are they all the same? And there's no difference between them? They are not morally equivalent. They are not uh, the same. That, those two examples are, are practices that are not as good as any other culture. And so there can be a difference and there is an objective difference between them. Uh, they are not subjective and just in the eye of the beholder. Therefore, moral relativism is incorrect. And premise two, which says objective moral values and duties exist, is correct. And so I would submit that premise two is something that we should believe in or adhere to. Uh, that is the first argument against premise two, moral relativism. Proclaim the glory of the Lord, make known his mighty deeds to all, take up the call, let every nation know.